Okay guys, in this video I will discuss about the truss analogy versus bending theory whenever you are going to design any pile cap. Okay, so in designing process of pile cap there are two theories. First one is your truss theory and second one is your bending theory. Okay, so this video is going to clear when you should use which one of these two theory. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so at the very first, I just would like to recap the basic difference between truss analogy and bending theory. Okay, consider these two beams. This is first one and this is the second one. So definitely you can see that in both the cases, the depth is same. Okay, but the span or the effective length of this two beam is completely different. If it is L, let's say this is almost 2 L. Okay, and also in both the cases, let's say the load is also same. Or maybe in some cases, the load is quite higher for this one. Okay, so what are you thinking? In which case, how the load is going to be transferred? First, consider this one. Okay, so here, so you can see that if this is P, the reaction is P by 2 and this is also P by 2, assuming the load is being applied at the middle of the beam. Okay, so due to this reaction and due to this applied load, the bending moment diagram maybe looks something like this. Okay, and also here, you can say that well the bending moment diagram will be something like this yes in theory actually it is possible and in bending moment theory we do not normally consider the thickness of the member or the depth of the member okay and that is the reason whenever you draw the bending moment of any beam whether it is a simply supported or a continuous beam you always draw a line and this line represent the beam actually that means you are simply ignoring the depth or thickness of the member and that is the problem okay let's say the span of this beam is much much higher compared to the depth of the beam in this case definitely this bending theory is valid this is the reaction p this is the reaction p and due to this reaction P as this length is much higher compared to the depth of the member in this location you will have a bending moment like this and the value is simply P times L no confusion we are familiar with this concept okay because from the very first beginning class of our theory of structure we used to draw the beam in the form of a line we simply ignore the depth or the thickness of the beam now in case of a pile cap normally what happens if these are the two piles this is pile a and this is pile b and the center to center distance is only let's say 3d okay and the depth of the pile cap is also let's say d where in both the cases d is simply the diameter of the pile in that case what are you thinking the load or the reaction will be able to produce a bending moment at the face of this column no in this case the load will be transferred something like this because this is the shortest path in this case okay so here you can see you are applying the load here and it is simply being distributed between these two pile like this in the form of a axial load in the form of an axial load clear and due to this axial distribution here you can see it is producing a truss and here this is the strut okay and this is the tie okay so if in case of a pile gap the depth and the distance is not much different in that case the bending theory is not valid in that case simply the applied load 
distributed between the two piles in the form of axial force and a truss is formed like this where this is the tie and this is the strut and this is also known as strut and tie method okay now go back to the real life how this is applied actually okay so here you can see this is a column which is placed eccentrically compared to the center of the pile gap okay and also here you can see we have number of piles and if we simply compare uh, the reaction force if this is the applied load p so in different pile we will have different reaction force and based on the reaction force at the face of the column okay at the face of the column we will have a large bending moment because here you can see the distance from the farthest reaction point to the face of the column if it is let's say at least 3d okay 3d times we have two pile here okay two pile row first and second so at least we have 6d distance okay so compared to 6d even if the depth of the pile cap is only d we can apply the bending theory here so here this is the applied load and this is the reaction force so at the face of the column we will have sufficient amount of bending moment right so here you can apply the bending theory to calculate the depth of the pile cap as well as the thickness how simply at the face if you find the bending moment here if you know the bending moment so to find out the depth what you have to do simply you know bending moment is distributed in the form of compression and tension so at the top it is compression at the bottom it is tension this is tensile force okay this is tensile force and if you can calculate this tension and compression or if the allowable tensile force is known to you or the allowable compressive force is known to you based on the grade of the concrete you can definitely find out what should be the minimum lever arm for the depth of the pile cap and also once the maximum compressive force is known to you you can also find out the area of steel required based on the maximum allowable tensile force okay so this is the bending theory to design any pile cap but here if you see that if this is the column okay here the distance is not much from the face of the column the reaction point is only maybe hardly 2d away okay where d is the depth of the pile cap and this is the distance 2d okay so here we can use the strut and tie method from this point the load will be transferred to this pile in the form of axial force okay that is the reason here you can see that this is the applied load and as the depth here you can see only 1.1 meter whereas the distance is only 1.8 meter so the bending theory it is not applicable for this case okay so what you have to do you have to apply the strut and tie theory or the truss analogy and in the truss analogy you can see if this is the applied load and this is the reaction force this whole zone this is the concrete it is under the action of compressive force so you need to provide the shear link like this to safeguard the concrete in this zone and you can see here that is it is the tie and the tie is always under tension so here you need to provide sufficient amount of reinforcement tension reinforcement or the main river 
to resist this tensile force okay so i am not going into the uh, detailing of the design i am just trying to convey the basic idea behind using the strat and tie method and the bending theory whenever you are going to design any pile care hope from the next time you will consider this concept whether you should use the strat and tie method or whether you should simply go with the bending theory okay so if you like this video don't forget to share it